So the book, it's, it starts off sort of with like a history of, of planetary climate science and where we are today with it. We've been studying the planets of our solar systems with probes for a long time now. Um, and we've tapped into that knowledge to find out more about ourselves and, and about our planet. Um, can you briefly explain what we learned from exploring beyond this little blue marble? Sure. Yeah, I mean, in a certain sense, it seems like we've been exploring the solar system for a long time now. And look where we are today with Cassini around Saturn and rovers on Mars and New Horizons past Pluto and heading towards another Kuiper Belt object, etc. It's it's really pretty incredible, Akatsuki orbiting Venus. And yet it really hasn't been that long, right? It's it's uh, really just one human generation. We, we uh, started sending spacecraft uh, in the 1960s to other planets. So this is still new knowledge that we're integrating. But one, one of the big benefits of, of exploring widely beyond our own planet is what we've learned about our home planet. There are a lot of insights about Earth that we've gained that we only could have gained through sort of leaving home and looking back and looking at the stories of our, our neighbor planets and understanding how, how they diverged from Earth. So in addition to this explosion of knowledge about the other planets, there's a, an explosion of knowledge about our home planet, uh, some of which is very important for just our own, um, you know, well-being on this planet and our own sort of self-management on this planet. And that's, that's part of what I tried to convey in the first part of this book, is, which is called, uh, you know, listening to the planets. It's uh, what have we learned uh, from planetary exploration and how does that help us with our task of, of uh, hopefully doing a better job of managing ourselves here on this planet. You've been studying the planets pretty much since you were a kid. You, uh, you grew up around people like Carl Sagan, who you call Uncle Carl. Um, you worked with Jim Pollack from NASA Ames, biologist Lynn Margulis, who uh, formulated the Gaia hypothesis, um, and many more awesome individuals through a, you know, a pretty long career now. Um, First off, what was it like to work with you know, some, or just be around these legends of science? And, yeah. and also, uh, these people are also so involved with the popular, popularization of science. Um, uh, is you think that's a good thing? Absolutely. I, you know, I was very fortunate to grow up uh, where and when I did. And, and uh, gr you know, I knew Carl Sagan from when I was six years old because he and my dad were best friends. They were both Harvard professors and they, they happened to be best buddies. So he was Uncle Carl. He was around the house a lot. And, you know, he used to tell us bedtime stories. And, you know, just like he w became this sparkling TV personality popularizer of science that everybody knew, back then he wasn't famous, but he was this great storyteller, uh, you know, with infectious enthusiasm about the universe that, you know, rubbed off on me and everybody around him. So, so that was great. Uh, you know, it was also a smaller field back then. So uh, just about everybody in planetary science who's been in it from, you know, from the time I got into it when it was still a new, a new field can say, um, I knew Carl Sagan, I worked with him. You know, he, he, w he was out there collaborating with everybody, you know, so a lot of people had that experience of collaborating with him as a scientist. And then um, I ended up doing my postdoc with, with uh, Jim Pollack at NASA Ames, who was actually Sagan's first grad student at Harvard. And then Pollack was an incredible guy who really was responsible for a lot of breakthroughs and knowledge about planets, their atmospheres and climates and and about earth and and making that connection between you know what we learned about dust storms on mars and how that applies to understanding climate changes on earth that happen because of volcanoes or because of asteroid impacts or, or nuclear winter you know all, all those studies are connected and and same thing with uh you know sagan and pollock were the ones that really worked out the greenhouse effect on venus and then that has really interesting um, implications for understanding climate change on Earth. So it was this, this group of scientists that I sort of fell into and trained with who were responsible for a lot of these insights about what was happening on other planets and who were applying that to uh, what has happened and what could happen here on Earth. Space.com.